You've downloaded the latest, greatest, multi-billion parameter model. You try to fine-tune it on your own data, and then... CUDA out of memory. It's a tale as old as time. Your GPU, with its 8 or 12 gigs of VRAM, just can't handle it. This is the exact problem that LoRa solves. Welcome to LoRa in 20 minutes. We're going to build it from scratch. <clears throat> no BS, no magic black boxes. Now, you've probably heard the fancy terms, parameter efficient fine tuning, low rank adaptation. It sounds so complex, doesn't it? But here's the thing, it's not. It's just a simple trick, a really, really clever trick. And here is the core idea. Look at this formula on the screen. The new weight, w new, is the original frozen weight plus some change, delta w. But here's the key. You don't touch the original w. It's frozen. You only train the two tiny matrices you see here in green, A and B, that make up that change. That's it. That's the whole idea. And this, this is our destination. This single class, LoRa Linear, captures the entire technique. This is the code we are going to build together. Okay, I know, I get it. This might look a bit intimidating right now. You're seeing things like nn.parameter, chiming in it, what is that? And what's with these nested f.linear calls down in the forward method? It's totally fair to feel a little overwhelmed, but here is my promise to you. You will understand every single line of this code. And by the end, you'll see how this simple class can reduce the number of trainable parameters by over 99%. But first, before we can build this powerful tool, we must understand the beast we're trying to tame. The component that consumes all our memory in the first place. So what's the culprit? What's the one component that's secretly eating all of your memory? It's this. NN.linear. <clears throat> it seems so innocent, right? <laughs> And honestly, it does only one thing, the formula you see right here on screen. The output is simply the input times a transposed weight matrix plus a bias. That's it. It's just a matrix multiplication and a bias addition. So why does this simple little layer cause so much trouble? Let's demystify it completely. We're going to build a minimal example from scratch. No black boxes allowed. Okay, here's our setup. We're going to map from three input features to two output features. We import torch and torch.nn, and then we create our layer. Layer equals nn.linear within features equals three, and out features equals two. We'll also create a single input tensor with the values one, two, and three. Now, here's the important part we are going to manually set the weights and the bias. We're using torch.nograd here because we're not training, we're just setting things up. We'll set the layer.weight and layer.bias to some specific numbers so we can follow the math all the way through. All right, let's visualize the data. We know every single number involved in this operation. First, we have our input tensor of one, two, and three. Then we have our weight matrix, which you'll notice is shown here transposed, ready for the math. And finally, our little bias vector of 0.7 and 0.8. So let's do the math ourselves. Step one is the matrix multiplication. Let's calculate the value for the first output neuron. We take our input and multiply it by the first column of the transposed weights. So that's... 1 times 0.1 plus 2 times 0.2 plus 3 times 0.3, which gives us 0 0.1 plus 0 0.4 plus 0 0.9 for a total of 1.4. Simple. Now for the second neuron. It's the exact same process. We take the input vector and multiply it by the second column of the weights, 3.2. Okay, we're almost done. We have the result of our matrix multiplication, a vector with 1.4 and 3.2. The final step, step two, is to add the bias. 
So we take our intermediate result and we add our bias vector of 0.7 and 0.8. And that gives us a final output of 2.1 and 4.7. And if you run the code, you'll see this matches the PyTorch output exactly. Okay, so that seems pretty trivial, right? A little bit of multiplication, a little bit of addition. Where is the bottleneck? Why does this one operation cause so much pain? The problem is scale. Let's compare our toy example to reality. For example, in this table, our toy layer was three by two. It had a total of eight trainable parameters. Now, let's look at a single layer in a large language model like Llama. The dimensions aren't three by two, they're 4096 by 4096. The total number of parameters? Over 16 million. <gasps> and remember, that's just one layer. So here's the real problem. Fine tuning requires updating every single parameter, all 16 million of them in that one layer, and then all the other millions in all the other layers. This breaks your GPU. This is the operation that fills your VRAM and causes that dreaded CUDA out of memory error. <sighs> we need a better way. We need a way to cheat. So here's the big question. How do you change W without changing W? I know, it sounds like a riddle, but the answer is the entire secret behind LoRa. The solution is brilliantly simple. You freeze the original weights, just lock them in place. Then you add a tiny trainable adapter on top. As you can see in this formula, the new effective weight W new is just the original W frozen plus a small change, which we call delta W. But wait, if delta W has the same massive shape as the original matrix, aren't we just back where we started? Yes, and this is where the magic happens, the decomposition. Look at this formula. We don't learn the big delta W matrix directly. Instead, we represent it as two much, much smaller matrices, which we'll call B and A. We multiply b times a, and then apply a little scaling factor, alpha over r. So we take a big matrix and represent it with two tiny matrices. That's the entire trick. Okay, I know that looks abstract. Let's make this concrete. We are going to calculate every single number by hand. You're going to see exactly how this works. First, the setup. Let's define our parameters. We'll choose a rank R of two and a scaling alpha of four. And here is our big original frozen weight matrix W. It has a shape of four by three. You can see the numbers here. The first row is one, one, one. The second is two, 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 and so on. This matrix is locked. We will not be changing it. Next, we initialize our LoRa adapter. This means creating our two tiny matrices, B and A. Their shapes are determined by the rank. Matrix B has a shape of four by two, and matrix A has a shape of two by three. And notice the inner dimension here is two, which matches our rank R exactly. This is crucial for the matrix multiplication to work. All right, let's get our hands dirty. Step one, multiply. We'll calculate B times A to get the raw update. So we take our B matrix and our A matrix, we multiply them together, and bam, we get this new matrix, which we'll call the raw update. And what do you notice about its shape? It's four by three. It matches our original W shape perfectly. Okay, on to step two, scale. Remember our scaling factor? It was alpha divided by R. So that's four divided by two, which equals two. We just take that number two and multiply every single element in our raw update matrix by it. And what we're left with, this final scaled matrix, that is our delta W. This is the total change that we've learned. Finally, step three, merge. To get the final effective weights for our model, we just add W frozen and delta W together. So we take our original matrix with all the ones, twos, threes, and fours, and we add the delta W we just calculated and we get this final, beautiful, effective weight matrix. Now here is the most important part. This merge only happens once after training is done. 
This means that during inference, when you're actually using the model, there is zero extra latency. It's just a standard linear layer. So that raises a question. What happens during training? We can't merge it because we're still learning A and B. The answer is we keep the paths separate. As you can see in this diagram, the input X goes down two paths simultaneously. One path goes through the frozen weights, the other, parallel path, goes through our LoRa matrices, A then B, and then gets scaled. The results are then added together at the very end. Why do we do this? Because creating that full delta W matrix on every single training step would waste a ton of memory. Keeping the path separate is way more efficient. The math works out to be Wx plus B times Ax. Okay, that was a lot of numbers. So, what was the payoff? Let's go back to our llama layer with its 16.7 million parameters. Let's see what happens when we apply LoRa with a rank of 8. In this table, you can see Full fine-tuning requires you to train all 16,777,216 parameters. But with LoRa, we only need to train 65,536. <gasps> that is a 99.61% reduction in trainable parameters. 99.61%. This is why it works. The math is elegant. It's beautiful. And now that you understand the theory, let's code it from scratch. All right, this is where theory becomes a tool. We're going to build from scratch the LoRa linear module. So what's our blueprint? Well, it's just a direct translation of the formula we just learned. Y equals W frozen times X plus alpha over R times B of AX. And we're going to put that right inside a PyTorch class called LoRa linear. We'll have an init method and a forward method, but what goes inside? Let's find out. And here it is, the complete class. 30 lines of PyTorch, that's it. I know it looks like a lot at first glance, but don't worry, we're going to break this down piece by piece. You can see it has four main parts. Number one, we freeze the base layer. Number two, we create our trainable A and B matrices. Number three, we initialize the weights. And finally, number four, we define the forward pass, which is just our formula. Let's tackle them one by one. First up, part one, the freeze. This is the most critical step. Look at this line right here, self.base.weight.requiresgrad underscore with false. This one little command tells PyTorch, do not track history for this layer. Do not save its gradients. And because of that, you save massive amounts of memory. This is the core of LoRa's efficiency. Okay, part two, the new matrices. Now that the original layer is frozen, we need to add our own trainable parts. We create LoRa underscore A and LoRa underscore B. And if you recall the math from last chapter, the shapes are exactly what we expect. A's shape is R by in features, and B's shape is out features by R. And how do we make them trainable? We wrap them in nn.parameter. This is how you tell PyTorch, hey, these are the tensors I want you to learn. Next up, part three, the initialization trick. This is so clever. For matrix A, we use a standard random initialization, chiming uniform in this case. But for matrix B, we initialize it with all zeros. Now, quick quiz. If B is an all zero matrix, what is B times A? Zero, exactly. This means that at the very beginning of training, our entire LoRa update is zero. The model behaves exactly like the original pre-trained model. We start from a stable state and only learn the change from there. It's brilliant. And finally, part four, the forward pass. This part is just a direct translation of our formula. It's beautiful. The base output, base of x, is simply our frozen wx. No surprises there. And the LoRa updates, well, that's the other half of the equation. It's our alpha over r scaling factor times b of ax. Then we just return the base output plus the LoRa update. That's it. We've built the whole thing. The theory is now code. The big question now is, 
where does this actually go? I want to be very clear. It is not a toy. It is surgical. And you use it on real, powerful models like Llama 3, Mistral, and Gemma. So let's peek inside a transformer block. We're going to target very specific linear layers. As you can see in this diagram, a transformer block is made of a few key components. You have your input, it goes into multi-head attention, then a normalization layer, then a feed-forward network, and another normalization layer, and finally, the output. And these blocks are stacked, maybe 32 times in a row. Most of the NN.linear layers that we care about live in two places, attention and feed forward. Let's look at target one, attention. Specifically, we replace the Q lowest and V joys layers. By adapting attention, you let the model learn what information to focus on. For example, you can teach it to focus on legal precedents instead of just casual conversation flow. It's about changing the model's priorities. Next, target two, the feed forward network. Here, the layers are gate project, up projects, admin, down project. Adapting the FFN lets the model learn how to process and represent that new information it's focusing on. This is where it learns new reasoning patterns, or maybe even domain-specific vocabulary. But why does this work so well? How can changing just a few tiny matrices have such a huge impact? It's all based on a powerful idea called the low-rank hypothesis. Here's the intuition. New tasks don't require relearning the entire world. Think about a car. The engine is the pre-trained knowledge. It knows about physics, combustion, mechanics. It's incredibly complex. Full rank. But the steering, that's the task adaptation. Turn left, slow down. It's simple, low rank. Laura is the steering wheel. That update matrix we built, delta W equals B times A, that formula right there, that contains the steering instructions. We leave the heavy engine, the frozen W, completely untouched. So you see, you didn't just watch a video. You did so much more. You truly understood. You know what it does, efficient fine tuning. You know why it works, the low rank hypothesis. And you know how to build it from scratch in PyTorch.